Thanks for joining us today for another P6 training module presented by TEPCO located in Baytown, Texas. Today we're going to talk about the Schedule Performance Index. I am one of the P6 trainers and implementation specialists here at TEPCO. The intent of this session is to define what SPI is and then also show you how you use it in P6 when you're doing scheduled performance analysis. SPI is one component of Earn Value Project Management. There are three primary components in Earn Value Project Management. First one being Planned Value, or PV, also referred to as Budgeted Cost of Work Scheduled, or BCWS. The second is Earn Value, or EV, also called Budgeted Cost of Work Performed, or BCWP. And the third one is Actual Value, or AV. This is also referred to as Actual Cost of Work Performed, or ACWP. SPI is derived from the plan value and the earned value, so this session will be focusing on those two components. Actual value with earned value defines something called CPI, and you can look for a separate YouTube video from TEPCO on CPI. So let's talk about the plan value and earned value definitions. Plan value is the amount of hours targeted or planned to be complete as of the data date. In order to understand the plan value hours, a baseline target must be assigned to the P6 project. This provides us with a plan value curve in an S-curve chart and also tells us how many hours per shift, day, or week are targeted to be performed. Earn value is the amount of hours achieved as of the data date based on progress entries into P6. We can only earn against baseline hours. So if you add activities to a project plan that already has a baseline assigned, you would want to make sure that you also add those activities into the baseline through some sort of change management process so that your teams can earn the hours against those new activities. At TEPCO, we recommend two baselines, one being an original baseline, which could be set as the primary user baseline in P6, and the other one being a change management type of baseline for added hours or added activities that occur during the execution of a turnaround or a project. The Scheduled Performance Index, or SPI, is calculated by dividing the earned hours or cost by the planned hours or cost. It provides a quick way to determine if hours are being earned on a job when they were planned or baselined to be earned. A value less than one indicates that less work was actually earned than was planned. A value greater than one indicates that more work was actually earned than was planned. The formula for SPI is SPI equals the earned value divided by the planned value. Now let's relate SPI to an S-curve. Here we have an example S-curve with a baseline S-curve in it, shown in red. The data date is coming down as a blue dashed line. Our plan value as of the data date was 4,200 hours. Now let's take a look at the earn value. Our earn value comes in, and according to progress entries, we have earned around 2,600 hours against our baseline. Now that we have the earn value and the plan value defined in the S-curve as of the data date, we're able to use those two figures to give a schedule variance. So we plan to get 4,200 hours achieved. We only actually earned 2,600 hours, so we're 1,600 hours behind. So if we consider that our goal is to have an SPI of 1, and our schedule performance in this case is 0.62, which is the 2,600 hours divided by the 4,200 hours, we can visually see in the graph that our earned line is at about a 0.62 ratio if we considered our planned line as of the data date a 1. Another way to look at it is that our target is 100% as of the data date and we only earned 62%. So the graph tells the same story as the SPI number does. So what does SPI tell us? Some typical questions are, when you see a low SPI, is there anything preventing crews from starting a job on time? Now in the oil and gas industry, this could mean that maybe lines are not prepared to open, permits are not ready, etc. Were there any environmental factors that stopped them from working? Hurricanes, bad weather, rain, lightning. Was the original estimate too low? Did they just not plan it correctly? And the other question is, is can you increase the resources to improve the schedule? In that case, you would also want to consider CPI, which as mentioned earlier, will be a separate YouTube presentation. Now, if the SPI is high, you might want to ask, was the original estimate too high? 
meaning that the work completed faster than expected. People need to be careful with that one because if the original estimate was too high, it's possible that other work could have been performed that was maybe removed from the schedule in order to keep the entire project plan or turnaround plan under a specific budget. Another thing to ask is should we move resources to other jobs that are behind? So for example, in a downstream refinery turnaround, you might have a high SPI on your piping jobs, but a low SPI on your valve replacement jobs. Can you take some of those piping resources and move them over to valves? That would slow the piping down, and you would only do that provided the piping jobs were not going to turn critical. It would slow the piping jobs down and then give you the opportunity to move some resources over to the valves and start speeding up or, or catching up on the valve work. Another thing it can do is indicate that maybe it's time to start laying off or reducing resources. Work is getting done faster than planned. Maybe the critical path in the plan is on target so they don't have a big concern over the critical path but they could start reducing their resource headcounts or even reducing the hours per day, slowing the work down. Even if they get some of these jobs done quickly, the critical path defines the overall duration of the project, so it may not be of benefit to run crews on overtime and pay them premium times. So to summarize, all we need in an S-curve are the two points, the earned value as of the data date and the planned value as of the data date. Those two figures give us SPI. Now I'm going to take you into P6 and show you how you can use SPI to drill down from the top of a project all the way down into detailed activities to find areas of concern. The example I'm going to use is of a refinery downstream turnaround. I currently have it grouped by WBS. WBS is set up based on equipment types. First thing I want to do is go through the columns that I have displayed. The first area consists of these first five columns. I'm showing the schedule performance index by labor units, plan value labor units, earn value labor units, schedule variance for labor units, and budget at completion labor units. The next section I'm showing the schedule percent complete which is actually the planned value percent. So if you've never used that percent complete column, it is based off of the planned value. The next column is the performance percent complete, which is based off of the earned value. So it's the earned value percent. And then this third section that I've split out here is the schedule performance index for cost and the planned value cost, earned value cost, and the budget at completion. All of these are cost fields. These are the earned and planned percent fields, and all of the ones on the left are labor units fields. Regarding the schedule percent complete and performance percent complete fields, Oracle has changed how these fields have calculated in version 8. Previous versions, these fields calculated only off of planned value and earned value cost. So if you are using a previous version, you want to keep that in mind. And in order to make those fields calculate properly, you would probably need to assign some costs to your resources prior to setting a baseline. The simplest way if you're not doing costs in P6 is to just put a dollar an hour on each resource that you want to include in your earned value calculations. And these percent fields should calculate properly. But even in version 8, these two fields appear to be calculating off of the costs as well. However, I have built projects in P6 where I did not apply any costs and the fields still calculate. I have not contacted Oracle yet to get an explanation as to what the change was. But I can tell you that schedule percent complete is the plan value cost divided by the budget at completion. And the performance percent complete is the earned value cost divided by the budget at completion. So it's basically tracking the percent completes of where you baselined your schedule to be as of the data date versus where you actually are as of the data date. For the remainder of this session, we will only focus on SPI by labor units. If I look at the overall SPI for this turnaround, it's currently at 1.13. If I compare that to the S-curve graph that I have down below, we can see that the ratio also indicates an SPI of 1.13. The teal line is the planned value, and the planned value as of the data date, of course, our target is a 1. And the orange line is the earned value, so you can see that visually the orange ends at the data date at about a 1.13, 
if compared to the plan value and we consider the plan value to be a 1. In addition to that I can apply a filter. I've preset up a filter to only show exchangers and I'm going to turn this on. And you can see that our exchangers SPI is currently at 0.81. If I look down at the graph, if the target is to be a 1, which is the teal line as of the data date, our planned value line, you can see the earn value line hits the data date at 0.81 if we looked at it as a ratio. The S-curve down below is a direct reflection of the SPI number. So how do we use SPI when we're performing schedule analysis during the execution of a turnaround or a project? The quick way is to just look at the overall SPI at the top level, and we can see that in general the project health is, is in pretty good shape at a 1.13. However, we need to expand and scroll down, and we can see areas that are ahead or above 1, and areas or WBS elements that are below 1. What we then can do is expand those areas that are below 1 and drill down into them to find out more detail on where the problem lies. If I expand the exchangers, which are currently at a 0.81, I can now go down into each exchanger and figure out which exchangers are falling behind. And if I wanted to expand further, I could find the specific activities that are running late. By the way, the SPI is based on man hours, but it's based on when those man hours were supposed to be completed. The SPI on this particular exchanger at a 0.78 is also reflected on the Gantt chart because we can see that our activities are running behind compared to our baseline. What Gantt charts don't tell us is the magnitude of the impact. For example, these activities are late. But if I don't look at SPI or the earned versus planned, I have no idea if these are two-hour tasks or if they're 100 man-hour tasks. So that's why SPI is so important and should be used in conjunction with monitoring finish variance. When you start looking at SPI and you start drilling down into it, you don't want to just look at the SPI number. You want to make sure that you correlate that to how many hours the job is worth. Here's an example of some compressors. This one's at a 0.86, but this one is at a 0.5. If we only looked at SPI, we would assume that this J117 loop set is the one that is in more danger. If we actually look at the total budget at completion labor units, you can see that the loop set is only worth 127 hours, whereas the first stage recycle compressor is worth 752. So they're actually both behind schedule almost equally here even though the SBI numbers are quite a bit different. So to reiterate, make sure when you're looking at SPI that you also consider the weight of the job. A 10-hour job that is behind schedule showing an SPI of 0.5 is probably not as big of a concern as a 1,000-hour job that is behind schedule showing a 0.9. An SPI that's below 1 on any job typically raises questions. So you may have to talk to your foreman of those specific job areas to determine why things are behind schedule. The other thing we can do as schedulers is try to figure out if we can move resources off of higher SPI jobs onto the lower SPI jobs in order to increase performance. This may not always be the case because different resources have different skill sets or maybe the issues with the jobs that are be below one have nothing to do with resource availability. Sometimes throwing more resources at a job does not solve the problem. Thank you for watching this TEPCO YouTube session on Schedule Performance Index in P6. If you'd like some more information on TEPCO services or our training programs, please go to www.tepco.us.